Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be looking at some AI driven research assistance. So we are going to be looking at three different sites. First one, ChatGPT has been seeing a lot of news recently. It's not really a dedicated research site, but I thought we would try it out. The next is called Illicit. Illicit is more focused on research. So you ask it a research question, it will do a literature search, it will then try and sort papers that it thinks are of interest to you. The final one is called SciSpace. SciSpace, again, lets you put in search terms or a research question. It will find papers for you. This one is really interesting because it will also try and explain bits of the paper to you. It will let you highlight words or phrases or even whole sections of text. And it will give you de definitions or it will try and explain things to you. Just for a little bit of point of comparison, I've also got Google Scholar open and I've also got Google open. Just to see what happens uh, or how these compare. So I'm going to run a few different searches here. Uh, these are the three that I'm going to look at. So they are somewhat technical and I wonder whether chat GPT might struggle a little bit. Uh, so we've got one about a particular depression scale in New Zealand and we will see very shortly why I've chosen this one. In fact we know a second one also about New Zealand and again very particular with what I'm choosing here. The third one asking about Myers-Briggs because that was a very popular video that I did recently uh, people seem to be very interested, and I am interested to see what these AI assistants are going to make of these. In particular, this last one, one of the concerns with a lot of these AI engines is once they start building models, how are they really determining what is good information and what is not good information? Uh, and particularly where we get into something where there may be conflicting answers. So let's grab this first one, uh, the Reynolds Adolescent Depression Scale. And let's see what ChatGPT has to say about it. Okay, so it's identified RADS, which is indeed the correct, the correct acronym for this. However, I'm not able to browse the internet to confirm its validity. Okay, well that's quite interesting. It's I, I haven't come across this before. I've only played a little bit, uh, and I haven't tested these in advance, so I am interested as well to see what each of these is going to come up with. Uh, so let's just, for a point of comparison, that's what Google has to say about it. And we can see here, got a few different publications, uh, all about Reynolds Adolescent Depression Scale in New Zealand. And in fact, you see the first one that comes up. This was something I picked on purpose because it is something that I have researched, written about. It's been cited few times now uh, and so this was actually my first published article and there's been others since then and the one that they're quoting here is one of the more recent ones it does have acceptable reliability validity psychometric properties so Google did a good job if we Google Scholar we just hit my article only so Google Scholar not as helpful there uh, let's come back to Elicit let's see what Elicit has to say about this so I did a bit of searching, and we can see here it's given me my own article twice in a row, which is a little bit weird. So that tells me that it's sourcing from a few different databases. Uh, over on the left here, we do get a summary. So summary of the top five papers, it's a little bit weird. Summary of top four papers, and then it says all three of these papers, uh, a little bit odd. Three of these papers suggest that these are valid tools. Uh, Walker, yep, that's me, found that it was valid and appropriate. And then there was a follow-ups by some other people. So that answered and it answered correctly. Let's jump over. We'll have a look at SciSpace. What do you think, SciSpace? Some of these tools do take a little bit of time. So here it's given, again, those two articles that got referenced uh, by Elicit. This time mine's come up second, uh, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, uh, where it was preferencing this slightly more recent one. And we can come down. 
And we can see some other articles, all very, very relevant to what we're interested in. If we jump into my one, and for something that's trying to be researched, not quite sure how I feel about it giving a TLDR. The TLDR that it's given is really pretty reasonable, just a summary. Uh, but as we see there, when I searched, when I selected it, it gives a summary. So let's actually do something that's a little bit more interesting. If we highlight a complex or a technical term, so Cronbach's alpha, and we can see hi highlighted on Cronbach's alpha, and it's given us a definition of it. We can also select the whole abstract. It's going to take a little bit more time to think about it. But what it's done is it has tried to write a summary. And these I have played with a little bit. And what I've found is that sometimes overall it gives a good summary. Sometimes though it will do a fair chunk of copying and pasting. So if we go through it kind of says this this high, uh, abstract says, and then it just starts copying a big chunk. And then there's a little bit where it summarizes, but then there's another chunk where not exactly copied, but pretty closely just saying what it says here. So I think this is an area that they will continue to work on. It will get better, uh, but certainly quite interesting. And for me, we can click on me. Uh, a couple of my affiliations, that one is definitely out of date. Um, but we've got some of my different papers here. This one's quite interesting where it's got a two minute summary and it's got full text. Some have full text, some don't. That's very dependent on the databases, whether it's open access. Trace uh, does let you look up where you can find uh, the papers. They can be behind paywalls though. Uh, I haven't actually looked at this two minute summary. So we jump in the two minute summary. It's just bullet points. Yeah, it's all pretty, pretty straightforward. I mean, it's kind of picked out a few slightly random things. I mean, it's it's good to tell you that it was covered by ethics committee, uh, but that's probably not a vital thing. Scores were continuous, no radiation theory. So it's kind of picked out things a little bit at random here probably done a little bit better on the results again though feels like that was a little bit picked out at random if we come down if we jump into something and this one I looked at before and I was kind of curious uh, if we grab the whole abstract I was curious this was when was it published okay not quite 10 years ago I couldn't quite remember what I was talking about here uh, so let's see if Copilot can explain it to me. And here we see that it really, it really is parroting what I wrote. It's not really explaining it very well. Um, and that's understandable because this is both fairly dense and technical and not, not technical in a sense that you can just look up a whole lot of definitions as well. Okay, so that was iSpace. It's the one that's probably the most interesting in terms of just seeing what some of these definitions are. It's got the, the not quite nice hyperlinking. Uh, for this one, we can see the full text as a hyperlink, um, and that will actually, in fact, take you to the full text. It's not behind a paywall. Uh, so pretty, pretty good. Let's try our next one. Chat GPT, it failed on our first one. Okay, so marital homogamy refers to tens of individuals to marry partners who are similar to them in socio-demographic characteristics. That is exactly right. I mean, that, that is pretty much a textbook definition. So it's done a good job. I'm not quite sure about this. I can't browse the internet, meaning it can't find anything. I know that earlier today, though, we're having server issues. It was a bit slow. We'll quickly try this Myers-Briggs question and see what it has to say about this. And then we'll test both of these uh, questions and elicit and... The other ones, definitely, I'm sure it doesn't need to be scrolling line by line like that. I'm sure I could just chunk it out. Uh, validity is this, is widely debated. Okay, so it's it's trying to sit on the fence. Uh, certainly, if you saw my video, it it was titled Why the Maya Briggs is Garbage, uh, because I think there is, in fact, this, this split, and this is something that I always worry about. This group of some researchers and practitioners is pretty much all statisticians and psychologists and 
these others are a mixture of people that have vested interests and people that are perhaps a bit clueless about psychometrics and statistics and things like that. But interesting to see ChatGPT just sitting on the fence on that one. Okay, let's try these two in illicit now. So marital homogamy rates changing in New Zealand. Okay, so this is interesting where the very first article it gave us is not about New Zealand. So it's given us something from the Netherlands. It's given us something about... So the second one, also not not super onto it. Certainly the Carmichael ones are fairly relevant. But let's have a show more. Let's see what the next few are going to be. So remember, GPT had a good, good definition of marital homogamy, but didn't really understand how to answer the question. The Paul Callister, that's that's probably one of the seminal articles that should be, that one should be up the top. And I guess vanity wise, I was perhaps hoping to see myself somewhere in there as well, but it did not come up. So we will just shelve that for a second. We'll try our Myers-Briggs question. Okay, well here, picking some pretty reasonable articles. Interesting date range. So certainly the title of this article, Item Validity, very relevant. 1984 has been cited 101 times. Uh, it is nice that it shows us the citation. These papers have mixed findings. Okay, so it's also sitting on the fence. Finding reasonable citations, but possibly not, not the best and most relevant ones. And again, really trying to test these tools out here with some fairly specific questions. Okay, so let's... Let's have a look at these homogamy rates and again I've also tried to pick particular phrasings of these questions that I don't know hopefully will help it okay so here we see this Netherlands article coming up first place again and then the second one being completely off base so we can see that possibly my question and I, I actually experimented not I haven't tried this one but a couple of variations of this question earlier leaving the word uh leaving New Zealand out of it. So just asking about marital homogamy in general. Daniel Lichter, uh, that's one of the key articles. That should definitely be in there, as should a couple of his others. But that, a little bit of a fail on both counts. Be interesting to kind of dive a little bit deeper and see why. So we take out New Zealand. Uh, Blackwell, that's another very important article in the area. There's the Lichter one again. Once we take New Zealand away, it's just a little bit better. It's still still not quite doing it. Uh, and let's just have a look at our Myers-Briggs. So it's generally picking the right types of articles, but I'm not convinced, particularly we look at some of these citation counts, seven, six, and also can't distinguish from the manual, which was written just by the people that make the tool, compared to actually proper critiques and then if we're thinking about the validity of it it's not going to be in an article issues in accounting education it's going to be in something like journal of personality assessment so we can see the tools not not perfect but still pretty interesting and still well worth having a look at if we jump over into google google actually does a pretty reasonable job i mean it gives us it gives us a, a few slightly more pop culture things it also does give us uh, things from the horse's mouth, which are not going to be particularly independent. Uh, but Google not actually doing too bad a job. Okay, so that's it for today. I definitely encourage you to have a play with each of these tools. ChatGPT is not really specifically a research tool, but can do some interesting things. And it's just fun to ask some questions. So that's ChatGPT, uh, elicit pretty good uh, I liked how it gave the summary it seemed a little bit hit and miss in the things that I gave it so I think with all of these there's definitely a bit of results may vary and SciSpace was the last one and again like not not perfect but certainly with that original search if we come back to that it was pretty bang on with pulling out the correct articles for us. Uh, and then by hyperlinking things, quite nice that you can then go down the rabbit hole of, okay, this author's written about this. Maybe they've written some other useful stuff. 
maybe I want to see more articles from this journal and let's us kind of go down that rabbit hole that way. So that's it for today. Hopefully you have made it through. Hopefully that was an interesting look at these three different tools. Uh, nice to be able to contrast. We can see Google Scholar, really no good for asking a question. If we just give it some keywords, then you know, it'll go for its life. It'll give you things linked to the keywords. It always prioritizes ones where it can link you up to an article. So it doesn't necessarily give you the best ones, but it will sort in two ways. One is by giving you highly cited. The other is by giving you ones where it can link you to a full text of some sort. And just good old Google actually didn't do too bad of a job. They have definitely put some effort into when you put in a question, trying to get you an answer, trying to get you a couple of the different variations with some answers to those as well. So please like and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you soon for more stats, research and other random stuff.